Hey everyone. Um, I wanted to continue in a conversation about going into visionary state and all this stuff. In the last video I said, you know, um, I've had a number of really significant dreams that I wanted to talk about. Now, I'm going to share a little bit about my current update. You know, what, what I'm doing right now is I've been working for this uh, ice cream shop Monday through Friday and um, when I got hired there, I kind of felt like I was really lucky to get the job because I know the lady didn't really want to hire me and I managed to keep the job and, and I did good enough that she did say praise, you know, for all the, all the help I was. But um, towards the end here, I've been kind of, I guess, complaining more, trying to, you know, explain to them why I think it's not fair to me, you know, some of the things that have happened there. And and so I had her meet up with me. I can't send her a message telling her, listen, you know, um, I feel like I'm not the person you wanted to hire. And, you know, if we have to part ways, give me at least to the end of May, you know. And so she came down and said, oh, well, I don't want to fire you and and stuff like that. And just that, um, you know, if I want to work to the end of May, move on, that's up to me. But she doesn't, doesn't want to part ways necessarily. But... Um, but she said she did like having me there just as much as everyone else. So at that point, it seemed like there was nothing going on. But, you know, um, one of the things she said in that conversation that I didn't like very much was that, because um, she was just trying to tell me, don't do the manager's job, let her do the manager's job. And the thing about it is she's sort of like, not somebody that works alongside her, but she's trying to run the store remotely because she has a handful of stores and she doesn't live nearby. So, um, it doesn't really seem like she gets much accomplished. Like, you know, it's, it's been kind of like a vicious cycle where um, it's just like, you know, just stand back and let me handle this and it never gets handled. So, but, so I started trying to speak up from, for these type of issues that I had and, and, and stuff like that. So anyways, just to break it down, um, it led up to her telling me um, that she, you know, let her play the bad guy and I just need to do my job. And and like, not that that's were her exact words, but I think her exact words were that she really wants these employees to be scared of her. And when she said that to me, I thought, wow, you know, it's funny because I felt like that for a while. I kept thinking, you know, it sounds like, you know, she just likes to surround her, herself with people that are afraid of her, that are kind of like, I guess what you call a psycho fan. They're going to agree with you whether you're right or wrong and just be in awe of you a little bit and you know, she's kind of an ordinary looking chick and everything, but, you know, she was born to a wealthy family and, and for all I know, that could be part of the reason she had uh, the ability to start her own business. So I really think it's a cool little business um, and her ice cream is really great, you know, so I endorse it, even though she fired me, still endorse it because it's really good. But um, this is somebody who you would consider to be a narcissistic manipulator. Like she's not super abusive. It's very... Uh, passive aggressive but you know she was starting to do stuff like not taking my phone calls and things like that and so I had a similar experience with um, another employer that had a shuttle company where wasn't taking my phone calls but um, acted as if I shouldn't make any decisions without involving them and that type of thing and it just seems like this is all stuff that's not fair and you know it's just been so pent up and then when she said she wants the employees to be scared of her I was like I was kind of ready to quit anyways but I just thought I should keep working there for at least a month or so so I could save up and get ready to, to get out of here because I think I'm just going to go back to Denver and and do everything from there. So it's kind of cool because I'm talking about some of the stuff I experienced um, my first few years in Denver and, and you know, part of what um, brought me to Montana was somebody who I met in Denver, you know, just before this time where it's kind of funny because I met her in the visionary state where I was also introduced to Bill Lee. She and I made friends, and then I ended up moving to Montana to stay with her, and and practically like adopted family, and so that's um, why I'm pretty much here at the moment. But at the same time, um, I've been exploring, you know, why you know has Billy been such an important part of my vision? So how come we're not, you know, making a connection at all? And so that's kind of what makes it baffling, is you know, like these the visions I think are really interesting and stuff like. Um, it seems like a lot goes into it. So that's why I've been trying to break it down real careful and, and tell you why it's interesting. Like it's not just my imagination, right? Well, along with that, occasionally I have dreams. And um, my little joke has been that Bill Lieb is the man of my dreams just because I feel like I dream about him more than most other people. Like um, I wanted to point out, um, I do have a couple of other videos in this playlist for the Jody Vision. Um, the band I wanted to join 
Um, I explained that um, I wanted to join Frontline Assembly and a lot of good stuff in there to, to share my thoughts on how I felt, you know, and kind of how I still feel, I guess, like, you know, of course, um, I'm always open to a friendship with Billy, but to be honest, I don't think I'll ever see him again or, you know, I'll never hear from him again unless maybe I write him a message or, or something like I'll probably never hear from him again for the rest of my life. So, um, so I really don't have my hopes up for any of these things, you know, and then, um, Another one I did was Artist Dreams. I thought that was a good one because uh, there, there's a number of artists where I think I've had at least one good dream about them, you know, and and they seem to be pretty vivid and memorable. And they seem to, you know, just be encouraging to me as a, as a, poss as a potential artist, as a potential music producer. I, I would reflect on these things um, in, the, in the long run, like, you know, that these things inspired me in part to, to make a career in music or as an artist, you know. And so, in part, I feel like that that could be the case with Bill Lieb. Now, I, I think something I forgot to mention is, like, when I wrote to Bill Lieb, I may have mentioned, like, you know, it does seem like I've had a number of these type of artist dreams and stuff, like, but Bill Lieb's the only person I've had visions about, especially at this rate. Like, there's so many visions. It's like hours and hours of me making videos about it, right? So there's hours and hours of videos on the topic for that reason. But um, I think New Order was brought up kind of as, as we were getting close to 2000, New Order was brought up a little bit. And I think I saw Julian Gilbert and Bernard Sumner walking around Denver and other than that. But it's mostly been about Bill Lieb. And that's why it's kind of strange that he gets picked. And so I've been examining, well, what, what, what is this for? So there's got to be a good reason for it because it really seems like a, a huge trick. You know, it tricked me into to making myself, um, to making a fool out of me, right? So anyways, um. Now that it's been over 25 years ago, I like to to think it's going to be safer to talk about, you know, it's been so long ago and I don't feel as emotionally affected by it. Like, I'm a lot more impartial, but there's still some heartbreak lingering from some of these uh, experiences. And and so, um, I don't know, I just feel like I've been told multiple times, oh, this is all your imagination. And I feel like I should defend myself and explain to you why it's not just my imagination. I can see how... Just because it's not happening in this physical timeline alongside other people doesn't make it invalid, but, but you know, it's really hard to define it. You know, I think it's above um, my education. Like, I really don't know <laughs> what it is. I can only share my understanding of what I've been experiencing as far as the, the parallel timeline and the visionary state. That's, to me, a super exciting discovery, and I think the most painful part about it is to just have people be like, oh, that's nice, Jody," and not really listen or not really care or, or share any bit of the excitement, but... um. As I mentioned, I have run into a few people who do go to Visionary State that seem like, um, you know, pretty believable people, people that are professional. They're not like, oh, man, she's crazy, you know, like that's not like that, you know, and um, except for Rosie, I think her family thinks that they don't believe her because they know dementia runs in the family and they know she's done a lot of partying and this type of thing. But um, so I think this is exciting because it's a major revelation and it ties in with um you know, like the history of spiritual uh, literature for that matter, you know, that, you know, where people get these ideas and, you know, the possibility that beings are communicating with us in visionary state is very important to, to look over. Now, when it comes to dreams, like, you know, when you go to sleep at night, it seems like you could reach almost any level of consciousness from being just blacked out to just having dreams that are a blur, you know, it's just really your, your brain noise, you're just blah, blah, blah in your head. But sometimes I think, you know, you come out of your body or you go to another level of consciousness where um, things are revealed to you. So you're not just dreaming. You might be, you know, out of body dreamscaping and all kinds of different, you know, possibilities where I remember waking up and thinking, wow, because I was just in a state of mind where like I felt like I was suspended in space and all this information was coming through my head and like I could perceive every last inch of it. But it was super fast. And when I woke up, like it was just a blur, like so when you're out of your body and you're in the higher state, you know, you can perceive a lot very quickly and, and comprehend it all. But when you're back in your body with the physical brain, it's kind of like a, a super old instrument in comparison, right? You know, like you're used to using your 5G thing. Imagine just getting bumped back down to have nothing but a, a telephone where you had to like twist the thing the whole time, right? Getting knocked back from that level of communication. Well, anyways, about the dream state, I, I don't want to get too far about what the visionary state because I wanted to make this about dreams. <sighs> At any rate, 
and and I, you know, and the longer my videos are, the the longer it takes them to download. I really think uh, my my tele my my cell phone here, my my mini computer, is um being pushed to its limits with me making these videos. Because even after you dump them, like it, it still seems to mess up your your amount of RAM or memory or whatever here. But um, when I reflect back on uh, the different dreams I've had about Bill Lieb, um. I picked um, the song Isolate, the video. I felt like, man, after I've had a few different dreams and I watched this video, there's some really interesting uh, correlations. And I think one of the earliest dreams I can think of about Bill Lieb was um, probably after that magazine article. So I've been mentioning how um, like this album came out in 92 and uh, the magazine article. So I saved this picture because I just, you know, I, for whatever reason, I was getting rid of the magazine I decided to just clip this out, and I had this really neat frame. So that's Bill Lee, probably 1992. And so, like, um, so I kind of had an idea of what he looked like by about 93 or so, because I started thinking about Frontline Assembly. That's when um, I started realizing I might know Bill Lee from somewhere. You know, I think at that time I was able to put together, like, if it wasn't reality, it could have been a vision, because, I, you know, I'd read about visionary state, you know, and I know it wasn't just a dream, so... That's after I started thinking about it, and like maybe I should contact Bill. And I've thought all, you know, I've always had doubts about whether I should do this or not. He's probably not gonna like me anyway. He's right. He's not gonna like me anyways. So that was a good reason not to do it. So so far I've been, uh, <laughs> you know, when I contacted him in '98, you know, everything. I think it went. I, everything I was afraid would happen happened. You know, I mean, and maybe I didn't expect it to happen that way, but it was still, you know. What I didn't want to have happen, happened. At any rate, um, this dream I had about Bill Lieb is a, <clears throat> that we went to their concert. And it just seemed like they had this little stage, you know, it just seemed like the band was cramped on stage. So after the show, it just seemed like it went by really fast. Like I remember seeing Bill Lieb with his microphone, you know, and, and just being cramped on this little stage. And that could be symbolic, you know, like maybe, you know, they never got the credit they deserve. They were a really great band, and um, they've always been pretty small. And I think that's just because the way music is promoted really ties in with, um, like, social politics. And, and so um, a lot of industrial music, you know, they don't want stuff like that on the radio. So these are uh, we're part of the counterculture. We don't like uh, the status quo, right? So, you know, that doesn't get promoted. So Bill's always been on a small stage, even though um, he's a tremendous musician. You know, it's, it's just amazing what him and a number of other people like him can do that are not being promoted because of the uh, the agenda there that uh, we're anti-war and we're anti-Bush and and Skinny Puppy and Frontline Assembly. Like, Frontline Assembly didn't really do a lot to point out, but he did a song where he lets you know that, yeah, um, if you've ever heard it, it sounds like George Bush saying, a gentler, kinder lobotomy, a gentler, kinder lobotomy. I love that. So... And, you know, with lyrics like, we'll steal your dreams, control your mind, you know. Um, no, the the music I listen to <laughs> is, um, you know, doesn't really support the status quo. So it's not very popular. And a lot of it's really dark and heavy. So I also think you need to have the right karma to listen to, to music like this. But anyways, back to my dream, you know, with Bill Lee being on that small stage and really not getting the credit he deserves, probably what that means. But I went to meet Bill Lieb out behind the theater and he was sitting in a jacuzzi filled with ice cubes and he had his leather jacket on and his hair was like really tall and um it didn't look like the picture I saw him in here but um interesting thing about that is later on I have seen pictures of Bill when he was a lot younger and he did have a big tall mohawk and uh and whichever style of hair where you look at him straight on it stands tall you know so he did have hair like that so that was a small premonition I seen a an image of Bill in my dream where you know the only image I've had of Bill is that he had his head you know what you call an undercut it's shaved with only the hair on top but you know it's kind of short and lays flat so that's the only image I've ever had of Bill before having that dream so that's cool and then the uh, the, the jacuzzi with the ice in it um well there's a music video they did called isolate and it shows somebody sitting in a bathtub full of ice now um I can't remember anything else about that dream so I hope I don't because I hate when I, I realized I forgot something. Now, let me see. I made a short list. Um, I mentioned in another video um, that I'd seen Bill Lieb in the white light, right? So I had this cool dream after I moved to Denver and 
and they had released an album so I'm thinking oh I can't wait to see these guys I had a dream about him in the white light and so when um I went to meet him in person uh, I didn't get a chance to talk to him but um but after meeting him I almost wondered like if he had the same dream as I did for a couple of reasons and then I heard the song silence with delirium and when I heard that I'm just like oh wow you know um Maybe he did have the same dream. So that was kind of interesting. I, I kind of had that question for him. It wasn't a pressing issue. I wasn't dying to ask him if me and him had the same dream. But um, but like I said, I felt like having that, that conversation with Rosie and that, uh, that last vision really prompted me to, to write to Bill. Because I, like I was saying, I was telling him in that letter, you know, I've had some really cool dreams. But I've just never, you know, had visions about somebody like this before where... You know, I almost think I've met them before, so um, kind of interesting. Now, um, trying to figure out what the hell I wrote here. <laughs> That's hilarious. So, um, I was, you know, it seemed like after I met Bill Lieb, I kind of uh, got involved with my Kung Fu teacher, so I really had him on my mind a lot, and I almost didn't think about Bill Lieb for very much. It just seemed like um, things were kind of normal for a while. There was, like, no visions and dreams and things that I could come up with for about a year or so, it just seemed like, um, after seeing Master Tay and, and it seemed like I was being attacked by some being, you know, so I did these other videos where I just felt like it was really bad depression. And then I got onto that, um, that website called I'm So Sexy where, um, <laughs> I may have gone onto Bill Lieb's website and I don't know if he noticed that or not, but I want to talk about that in another video too. But I wanted to talk about is I had a couple of really colorful dreams about Reese Fulber where like I've never had a single vision about Reese, you know, like that I've seen him in a couple of dreams that I thought were interesting. Now, um, I had a dream. It just seemed kind of like it's almost surreal, you know, so I'm not, I'm not really sure like if I could say I'm an astral travel, like in a, in a spirit plane or whatever. So it could just be my imagination. But um, it just seemed like I was laying on my belly and there was kind of a square hole and I'm looking down and I could see Reese Fulber and it looked like um, he was just in bed sleeping and and I just felt like kind of mischievous, like I felt like a little kid and I was just like ha 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 and I just wanted to reach down and you know Reese had long hair so I just kind of went to ruffle his hair, you know, and it was just so weird because like I, after I touched Reese's hair I went into this whole other dream but like I was surrounded by, you know, what seemed like rectangular shapes, like, uh, I don't know if, um, like the doors, like, later on my apartment got painted so that I think the doors are green with white trim and maybe sort of a beige backdrop. Well, I was seeing these colors in my dream before they did the paint job, because before that it, it might have been a pale blue. And so I was having this dream that didn't, you know, kind of it's kind of like seeds of thought, and I'm going to explain why, um, I'm pointing out why. I noticed the color of my surroundings and then later I noticed they painted my apartment those colors you know so um but it seemed like I was riding in a white jeep and it kind of makes me think of on Star Wars when you're in um and warp speed and everything is just like light is just streaming past really fast and um so I don't know if it was like I was with Bill Lieb so I'm like, yeah, okay, so there's Bill Lieb and I, and I'm trying to think like, like where we were in the vehicle. So it was kind of surrealistic. It's like this white Jeep and, um, and we're zooming along, but all of a sudden we took a wrong turn and there was somebody at the wheel that I didn't really recognize. And I don't think it was Reese, um, but it seemed like a younger person with brownish colored hair and he took a wrong turn. And we were going down into what looked like a, a really bad place. It was almost like sewage. It was just like all this stuff was slushing around and it was just like, you know, maybe it was like, um, not just sewage, but cosmic sewage. I don't know. It was just, it was the wrong direction. And I yelled to Bill Lieb, like, you need to take the wheel. And, and, um, and so it seemed like Bill was back at the wheel and I was being kind of yanked off by like the scruff of my neck. And, and, um, and it was like, Hey, wait a minute, I'm not done yet. So I grabbed onto the side of the Jeep, you know, we we're like going in warp speed for all we know. Right. But I climbed back in and um and I wanted to hug Bill Lieb, so I came up and put my arms around him to give him a hug. And he felt like a block of ice and he was like, please help me. And it's like he yelled it, you know. And then it felt like somebody came up and put their arms around both of us, like 
for some reason I thought it was Reese, but I'm not sure. It just seemed like it was in my peripheral vision. It was like, it was almost like white and pink sparkly energy came and hugged us and I woke up from it. It was like, you know, so this is like, oh yeah, a big fan dream, right? You know, silly dream about Frontline Assembly. And then I had another dream that, um, Reese was the driver. He had this, um, like this classic pickup truck and it was, it was painted red, you know, with good sparkle paint and it just seemed like everything was kind of red like you know and I wear my red glasses and it makes everything red you know and uh and my friend Doug was um in the passenger seat Reese was driving and he had this big stick shift and he's driving and um, my friend Doug was somebody that was going to music school you know so he was learning to be a music producer and Reese was thanking me for something and he was giving me money in the increments of five it just seemed like I was getting a five dollar bill handed to me and that's all I remembered about it and um and then the next day I went in and um Talk to my friend that runs a record store and he's kind of aware of Frontline Assembly and stuff. And um and I found out that Reese Fober left Frontline Assembly. And I don't know if they had like a breakup because of something to do with delirium, you know. And um and it was like, whoa, you know, like maybe you know, like I had a weird dream to do with Reese Fober and and him thanking me, you know, and so I don't know if that had anything to do with anything. <laughs> But um, but it just seemed like um, I don't really dream about him very much. I think later on I had a few dreams where it seemed like um, I thought this was funny, you know, just to get off track a little bit. Just that um, my dad was taking me someplace to get me enrolled in college, and like Reese was the person working the desk, and he started taking my side and telling my dad she doesn't want to go to college, she just wants to do music. So, so I like Reese. I feel like I see a little bit of me and him, you know, being the younger person. Like he dropped out of high school to be in a band, and um, and his dad's also um. I call him a good musician dad. He's, uh, you know, he plays rock music. He likes underground music. And I think he's always had a music studio. And and so I've learned a few things about Reese where I'm like, you know, I, I think it's exciting meeting somebody like myself that just grew up, you know, from the age of, at least the age of five, knowing they've always wanted to do electronic music. So he's a cool kid. <laughs> now he's he's actually older than me. He, he could have been my older brother, right? Anyways, um, about, uh, so those are... <laughs> Some of the dreams I had leading up to, uh, let me see, so we got our new album, uh, Flavor of the Week, and and he had this new co-writer named Chris Peterson, and so, so I wanted to talk about this dream. This was like a really important dream, because I was wondering who Chris Peterson is, and I had no pictures or anything about it, you know, like, so that's why it's kind of interesting, because this is another one where I felt like, um, like seeing somebody before knowing what they look like kind of dream goes like <laughs> so anyways uh, I have a few pictures over here um I set aside to share about this story quickly all right so um so yeah again this is what I'm talking about Bill Leap's been the one coming to my vision so that's something I clipped out of the magazine but I did get a chance to meet him a few times like in um not like 2007 it's kind of covered up but that's just um the day we went to see them in 98 and uh so the dream i'm having is kind of leading up to this so there's bill Lieb and chris peterson and i didn't get a good picture of them straight on that i could share but um what i really wanted to share was also this video i think i'm gonna have to tell the dream leading up to the concert in my next uh video because this is already going on 20 some minutes but i do want to share this music video because um of how it, it corresponds to a couple of these dreams I've had about Billy that I've, I've already shared here. So let me see if I can pull. Actually, why don't I do this? I'll just bring you guys with me so you don't have to look at the back of my head. And then um, I want to get this going. Ooh, yes. All right, so make sure it's not too noisy. So if you know this song, you don't need me to, to play it clearly, right? It, uh, but if you've never heard of this band before, this is one of my favorite things to listen to in my last couple of years of high school. You know, me and my dad used to listen to music like this. Right, so, um, you might think I have pretty hardcore taste in music, but... Now, um, right. I didn't write down the points where I want to show you. But this song, Isolate. I have a 
all my circumstances that are due to isolation, right? Just, you know, going through the visionary state experiences, not having anyone to help me, um, not, not being able to reach Rosie, not being able to reach Bill Lieb. <laughs> That's Bill Lieb, I think. Oh, look at that scary room. Right? Like, I don't want to show the whole video. Like, I'm just like, okay, where, where's the good parts? You know, I want, I want to, I want to sc scroll up to the good part. Oh, here we go. Here's a good part. See that? He's smashing up that ice block. And, and I've always been wondering, like, how, you know, how, how do I break the ice? So just really cool video art. Now, I really think these guys were big Cabs fans. And I, th I think this video kind of honors Cabaret Voltaire a little bit. If you ever see their video, Sensoria there to see. I was telling you guys I had a dream that Bill Lee was sitting in a jacuzzi filled with ice. So when I saw this, I thought you know, that could have been a premonition type of thing, you know? Uh, I think this is like one of the coolest songs. Like, So I'm going to pause it right here. Like, so It looks like Bill Lee's bed is kind of against the wall face in that far window. Well, that's how my bed was like in 2000 when I was really going through this experience, you know, so when I saw this uh, later on, I'm just like, I wonder, you know, if Bill Lieb has ever dreamed about, like, this apartment or something, and that's why they did this video, because they would have made this video before I even moved there, right? So, let me let me scroll here so you can see it. It's almost like, see, he's waking up in his dream and finding himself in this apartment, and he's seeing somebody walking outside, right? So, like, that's something too like when I was living in that apartment I kind of felt like somebody was like I thought Bill Lee was outside my apartment or like or whoever's watching me walks by and, and kind of checks on me through those windows you know but yeah I almost thought Bill Lee was out there one day saying something to me man and so that's why this is kind of an eerie video so here it is again like waking up finding himself in that place you know so um I really wanted to show that part Actually, let me, oops, I just really want to pause this a moment to share my apartment. So, like, I have the three windows. I don't know if you could see it in that video. Well, there's the three windows. Like, you can see the trophies on the second one over in this shot. And then the trophies are on the second one to the last in this shot here. And so this is where I was living in um, 98, you know. And, and um, so I kind of think when I went to see my dad... And uh, that Christmas, we were watching this video together, and it looked like somebody spliced in videos that looked like my actual apartment building. Like, it was kind of showing both the one that they had in this video as well as the one that I really live in. So, that made it kind of spooky. So, let me see if I can find. So, this is pretty good for, like, you know, it was made around 90 or 91. I don't know. Like, that's pretty old stuff. Over 30 years ago. They were making music this dope. So my little joke has been that, like, this is my dad's techno. This is boomer techno because, like, a lot of these guys were about my dad's age, right? Kind of ironic. So let me see. I, I really wanted to show... Um, this part that's coming right up. Here we go. See that? That big block of ice? It looks like... It's like Bill's hug, like caressing this big block of ice. So there we have it, Bill Lieb is caressing that big block of ice. There's Bill probably, right? Anyways, uh, <laughs> so like as far as him caressing that big block of ice, um, that that dream I told you guys were like, um, I felt like um, I climbed back in that jeep to try to give Bill Lieb a hug he felt like that big block of ice just and it was kind of like wet you know like I felt like I was hugging ice and it was wet <laughs> so I don't know like um if those are like things that exactly correlate so I think you know that that first dream in 93 like seeing him in that tub of ice um with the tall hair um and it took some time before I'd seen pictures of him with that actual air hairstyle but then with the Reese Fulber thing um I had these dreams about Reese Fulber, and um, by the time I found out he left the band, they had painted those walls in the hallway, those colors that I was describing, you know, and 
you know, it's just something I would catch on to. So it's just interesting because I don't have a lot of dreams about him, but maybe I was, um, the dream doesn't even seem to imply whether he's leaving Frontline Assembly or not. That's why I don't understand what he's thanking me for. But, um, the, the new keyboard play, <laughs> player, Chris Peterson, um, in my next video, um, I'm going to talk about the dream I had about meeting those guys before going to their concert because I really think it's interesting that I dreamt about him before meeting him and then um, just trying to make sure I didn't leave anything out. But I think, you know, I've had a number of interesting dreams about Bill Lee. Like some of them are just really vague and they just go by really fast and I kind of still have them. It just seems like he's around us, you know, and I can't really say there's a narrative or anything. But like I just remember at this point, you know, I've had some interesting dreams where Maybe I'd see Bill leave somewhere and we'd hug and we'd be happy to see each other and it's like an old friend of mine or something. So just some of those kind of warm feelings, you know, like that might have helped to to supply the the, the curiosity, you know. And um. anyways, uh, let me stop it here and I'll come back and kind of uh, continue with the next section of this conversation. All right, you guys take care. Thanks for listening if you do.